This sports segment of the Suburban Radio Hour is brought to you by the Montreal Alliance. Get your tickets to professional basketball now at alliancemontreal.ca. And good evening, Montreal. Beryl Wiseman, editor of the Suburban, here with you on the Suburban Radio Hour. My good friends and colleagues, Anthony Bonaparte, features editor, Mark Lippert, sports editor. And now we turn it over to Mark. And Mark, what have you got for us? Well, something that'll drive us right up the wall. I, I was afraid you were going to say that. Madison. I hope you listeners have have have, have uh, understood the, the Mark's penchant and brilliance with puns. So anything's possible at any moment. Go, Mark. Well, I'm joined by Madison Richardson, who, along with her husband, Zach, are uh, sport climbers, and they're members of the Canadian National Climbing Team, which also... Climbing is an Olympic uh, Olympic sport. Yeah, you, you let us know that, but you also told me something re- 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 remarkable. That at one time, ballroom dancing was an Olympic sport. That's right. Look it up. In what years? Oh, it was probably in the eighties when everything went. Wow. But I'm joined online. I'm Anthony joined, looks very jealous. I'm, I'm joined on the he line. He looks like he's missing something from his life now. I'm keeping what I want to say quiet. Okay. I'm joined on the line by Madison, who. Uh, is not with her husband, uh, Zach, at the moment. Zach's at the gym training, as usual. So uh, thank you, Madison, and uh, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me, Mark. So what got you in particular, because Zach's not here right now, but uh, what was the attraction to get into sport climbing? Well, uh, climbing is a pretty family-friendly sport, so most people discover the sport just by visiting a rock climbing gym in their like local area. Either a family friend brought you there or oftentimes people will join like kids camps or summertime camps or birthday parties. In my case, uh, it was a birthday party and then mm-hmm. it evolved into uh, I joined like the youth uh, climbing club there. And then that evolved into the competition team that they have. And then I kind of went on my own from there. Pretty much, I guess, the same route for uh, Zach. And is that where you guys met? Uh, so Zach's story is a little bit different, actually. Yeah. He um, he discovered rock climbing when his parents opened a rock climbing gym. Um, so his parents currently own Climbers Rock, which is a climbing gym in Burlington, Ontario. And uh, he started climbing in 2008 when they uh, moved to Canada to start a business. Mm-hmm. Um, his mom was a, a U.S. citizen and to... Uh, to, I don't know what exactly the situation was, but they needed to start a business in Canada. So they decided to start a climbing business. And then that's when the whole family got involved. And at what point did you guys or yourself realize, you know, I want to get into the competitive end of it because you've, uh, you've done quite a lot of uh, competitions over the years. You've been involved. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of kids that you grow up climbing with and some take to the sport a little bit better than others. Uh, Some people just kind of naturally have that competitive edge. They just want to be really good at something. Others really just enjoy it for the the fun and the community side. I think Zach and I were both kind of competitively driven and weren't really satisfied with just, you know, having fun with it. We wanted to be really good at it. And once we reached a certain level, we realized we were good enough to be, you know, top in the country. So we we figured we might as well try to do it. Now, relocating to Quebec, uh, the reasoning behind this was? Quebec is honestly is the best for climbing in Canada. Um, Montreal specifically has an amazing community of climbers and competitive climbers specifically. Uh, you'd think that like the West Coast would have the the best climbing areas, but I find that the indoor climbing gyms here and the competitive climbing scene is a lot more developed than the rest of Canada. And you just recently competed in China, I believe. Was that a World Cup event? Uh... Exactly. Yeah. So there are five World Cups this year for bouldering. Um, I've competed in two so far. So there's one in China at the beginning of April. And then at the end, or I think it was the beginning of May was the uh, USA Salt Lake City World Cup. So I competed in both of those ones. And uh, when you guys are training, uh, is it an advantage having Zach or you or Zach pushing each other when it comes to uh, improving your skills? To a certain extent, yes. I, I find that uh, with most sports, you know, there is a big difference between like what the men can do on the wall mm-hmm. and what the women can do. 
oftentimes uh, for the women, we're a lot more flexible and slow climbing and we're a little bit shorter as well. So sometimes we need to find different ways to get up boulders than men. So I try to let them push me only to a certain extent. Uh, if I kind of chase him too much, I'm going to get caught up in, you know, he can do moves that I can't because he's taller or stronger or whatever it is. Um, so I try to find as much as I can other women to compare myself to, but in a pinch and most of the time, honestly, because we're on the road so often, um, Zach is the one that I am, that I'm definitely striving to be like him in the powerful stuff. And he's kind of going, trying to chase me on the more vertical walls. And uh, upcoming competitions for the both of you, uh, anything lay ahead? Yeah, we're about probably a third of the way through the season for us. So my next event is going to be the Innsbruck Austria World Cup, and that's at the end of June. So I've got a, a little bit of time to prepare for that. And then Zach is going to uh, call. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of Vail, Colorado. Yes. Yeah, for the, yeah. the skiing, but they also have yeah. the GoPro Mountain Games there. Um, nice. So that's the site of uh, North American Cup, which is his next one. And also you keep busy, I understand. You're not on social media, but you're a blogger. And mm. uh, Zach, though, keeps you guys out there on YouTube and on Instagram. So people can check that out and see what the rock climbing is all about and the bouldering. For sure. Yeah. We, we try to post every few days on uh, YouTube. Zach records all of his training and puts it out online. So people can like comment on it and ask him questions about how to train for climbing. And then I write about our events and where we're, what we're up to. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I know you guys are busy training and uh, preparing. I think you said Zach's still in the gym. <laughs> he is. Yeah. So uh, I wish you guys the best of luck in the competitions uh, upcoming. And uh, listen, you know, it's it's a great sport. And uh, it's something that people can check out and see how good it is. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for having me on. Madison Richardson, who along with her husband, Zach, are uh, sport climbers on the Canadian National uh, Bouldering Team. Thank you, Mark. That was great. Uh Local sports is, is is bubbling and still going on. So you got uh, you've got everything from from wrestling to some flag football. Yes. Well, the wrestling is great because uh, the Riverdale uh, Wrestling Club that was founded by Jay Bradbury many many years ago, uh, and he's seventy four and still active with it. It's enjoyed a resurgence that started about eight years back when Joseph Azam approached him about uh, getting a youth program going to build up uh, the club again. And uh, that request came from Azam's background in the sport because he wished his son Jacob to enjoy the experience that his father had with the sport. Now, the start has grown to some 60-plus kids and teens wrestlers at the longtime not-for-profit club that serves the youths of the community. And at the recent Canadian National Championships held in Mississauga, three Riverdale members made podium and several are now ranked in the top five in the country. Meddling at the, uh, at the Nationals were Jacob Azam, silver medal in uh, freestyle in the Bantam 44 category. Uh, Zuchin Yu had a silver medal in Greco in the Bantam 41 kilogram category. And Joyce Hapia, she had bronze medal in the freestyle and a silver in the Greco in uh, the Bantam Girls 42 cate uh, kilogram category. But following the Nationals, Riverdale competed in the Eastern Canadian Championships, facing clubs from Ontario, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and PEI. And Riverdale proceeded to finish first among the 30 teams competing, earning the championship banners in the Tykes and Bantam Boys categories. So a really good comeback uh, story for this uh, organization. Excellent. And in the flag football, you couldn't resist the pun. The Saints go marching in. Tell us about that. That's because the visiting Sacred Heart Saints recorded a pair of uh, second half majors to take a 19-6 decision over Beaconsfield High School's Bisons in GMA Cadet Girls Flag Football. And leading the way for that was Sacred Heart's quarterback, Alyssa Mentcoury. She paved the way with a pair of running touchdowns uh, to break uh, open a close game in the second half. And... Uh, Next week, we're going to look at baseball. We'll have a preview of the base of the coming Center Sports uh, Celebrity Breakfast and the Montreal Alliance tip off their basketball season on the road, but we'll have a report on that. Mark, thanks a lot. That was great. Anthony, thank you. Thank Jen Cox, Mike Cohen. And we wish all of you a great Sunday evening 
This is Suburban Radio Hour. We'll be back with you next week. This sports segment of the Suburban Radio Hour is brought to you by the Montreal Alliance. Get your tickets to professional basketball now at alliancemontreal.ca.